Hey, welcome back everyone to another devlog. So I've been working on collision detection again, as I mentioned last week. I've made a lot of progress and I thought it might be interesting to show you a bit more code. I know some of you guys want to see some code now and then. And I also made a completely separate collision detection system from the separated axis system that I showed last week. So I'm going to show you the pros and cons of each system and how they work. So I'll first show you the progress I made on the collision detection from last week. I'll just call it SAT system for short because saying separated axis theorem it's kind of kind of long to say that every time. So I had some trouble with slopes last time and I decided to fix that with this little lip here at the top. So at first this top section was a separate rectangle like this but I decided to make it a little lip when you're on the slope otherwise it was easy to get stuck on the x-axis against the inner rectangle and yeah that's not what I want so I thought it would be best to just merge them I also added a little lip here at the bottom and that solved some issues with the transition from the slope to this flat ground here. If I would make the slope smaller then it was possible to ghost through the edge of the triangle. What that means is if you move let's say 5 pixels then it's possible to pass through an object during the collision detection. You can fix ghosting by doing a raycast or making a swept shape but I didn't want to bother with that, so I just made the rectangle like this and it works pretty good, so no complaints there. I also fixed things like one-way collision. So you can actually put different collision detectors on collision shape, so on a rectangle or on a slope. I'll show you some of that in the code later. And I also fixed sliding so you can slide down the hill and it's pretty fun there is one last issue if we put a tile here for example and we want to jump here we can't pass through it since it's solid but if we jump here then these two tiles are merged together and they get the property of this one-way collision object since the collision detection system merges all the tiles you're on. So I need to think of something for that. So this is the other collision detection system that I made for the tiles. This one just checks each tile one by one. It doesn't merge any of the tiles into one object. It simply tests the tile one by one. So what it does is actually first tests the collision on the X axis and then on the Y axis. That way you don't have to worry about getting stuck in between the seam of the tiles. So you can see the collision kind of works the same, it looks the same. You can do all the same things, you can slide. If we go here we can do the one-way collision again. And if we go here and we check the same thing again, you can see the problem doesn't occur because the collision detection system is testing each tile separately so it can see that these two tiles are different types and handle the collision accordingly. So I'll explain a bit about these two different systems and what the pros and cons are of each system. So the top one is the system where we check the collision for each tile separately. So how it actually works is we first test the x-axis and then we test the y-axis. So let's say we're walking forwards so we move forward but we also fall down a bit because of the gravity because it's a platformer game so the velocity is going to be into this direction somewhat so the next frame the collision shape is going to be somewhere here maybe so we're going to collide with these two tiles let's just mark those in blue I know that doing this in paint is a really professional way to make a presentation. So we're going to collide with these two tiles and you can see that the shape that represents the next position of the player is inside these two tiles. 
So we as humans kind of know we need to resolve the shape upwards. We, we collide it on the top. We know that, but how do you know that mathematically? So the way I do it, I first check the movement in the x direction. The x direction is gonna be maybe here. So that's the next x position. We just completely ignore the y velocity. We just check the x. So we can see there's no collision on the x-axis. So we don't need to resolve the x collision. But if we check the y-axis, let's do that in purple. The next y-axis is going to be downwards. So this is the next y position. And you can see there is a collision with this tile down below. So we know we need to resolve vertically. So then when we resolve the collision, we're going to end up on top of the tile here. Hopefully it makes sense. That's just a short explanation. Okay, let's get rid of all this garbage. So if you ever try to do slope collisions, you know that that's a lot harder. There are so many edge cases you have to deal with. One of those cases is, let's say you're moving along the slope and you end up here. The next position is going to be here. Then you're colliding with this inner tile and the collision system might think, oh, I'm colliding with this tile. I need to move up here. But yeah, that, that's not the right way to resolve the collision. So we actually need to ignore this shape. And yeah, I'm not going to explain everything, but there's a lot of edge cases like this with this collision system with the slope tiles. And that's why I came up with the SAT collision detection system, which merges the shapes. You can see that there's no inner tiles anymore. There's just one object. So we don't have to worry about getting stuck in the inner tile or things like that. It's just one shape. So yeah, this system is a lot easier to explain. If we move down here, you can just see it's just a single shape. So the separated axis theorem is applied and it shows us that we need to resolve to the top. And yeah, that's just how it works. Doing collision with one big shape with no inner edges is just a lot easier. But the downside is that you have to merge all the tiles and you have to keep looking for groups of tiles together which make up one shape. And one of the problems we saw in the footage was that we can sometimes merge tiles that are not supposed to be merged. So that's one of the downsides of this system. So just to sum it up, the separate tile collision system, the pros are that each tile is very distinctively separated. It's very easy to see the different tile types and therefore easy to resolve the different collision types that each tile may have. But the downside is you can get stuck in all these inner edges and the SAT collision detection system has the negative of sometimes grouping together tiles that are not supposed to. But the positive things are that each shape is very easily distinguished during collision. There's no worry about inner edges. Though there are some edge cases like here, there is an overlap between the shapes here. So we know that we have to somehow ignore these gray lines here. So I'll give you guys a quick overview of the code for these collision detection systems so you can get a rough idea of how I implemented this. So this is the SAT collision detection system, the one which merges the tiles into one shape. So you can see here the get collisions function, which gets the entity that's colliding, the retro rigid body, which is the object that holds the velocity and all the physics properties, the collider, which is the bounding box, and the tile layer, which holds all the tiles. So here we get all the properties for the position and the collider size and things like that. And then here I store the left, the right, the top and the bottom of the shape just for convenience. And then here I check the tile that the player is on. And then here I check the actual first tile that the player is on until the last tile. So the complete range of tiles that the player is on. 
So if we go back here, then this is the first tile the player is colliding with, this is the second tile, and then this is the third and fourth tile. So it gets these tiles that are overlapping the bounds of the player. So using these overlapping coordinates, I get the collision shapes. I'll go into it real quick, it's kind of long and complicated. I just check each tile and see if it's a slope or see if it's a rectangle. So here if I find a slope tile I make the slope shape and here if I find just a rectangle I make the rectangle shape. So I can go into the rectangle shape since that's not so difficult. It just checks all the tiles until there is not a rectangle tile anymore. That means we found the end. And it just merges them into one rectangle. Anyway, so here we got all the shapes. So there's a list of all the shapes. If there's no shapes found at all, that means that there's no collision. But if there are shapes, then we go through all the shapes and we check the collision with this shape in this line here. So we can go into the check collision function. We can actually see here that we check what kind of tile it is. If it's a cloud, that means it's a one-way platform. So then the collider that we just made, the shape that we just made, gets a one-way collision solver. If it's a slope, it gets a Y collision solver. So I'll go into that real quick. So each shape can have a different collision solver. The standard collision solver is just one that does the SAT collision detection that I explained in the last video. If you want to know how that works, you can check that video. But if it's a cloud, we can check here. We have the one-way collision solver and it has a function to solve the collision. So it kind of checks if we are moving upward or moving downward and based on that it decides if we can do the collision. So we can choose to only collide if we move downwards. So then we can jump through the bottom. Then there's the Y collision solver. What it does is it completely ignores the X overlap. It just resolves the collision in the Y direction which is useful for the slopes. I'll explain real quick why only doing the Y collision on the slope is useful. Let's say we collide diagonally like this. If we would use the normal SAT collision solver, then we would move diagonally back like this. So what happens each frame is we fall down due to gravity then we resolve diagonally, we fall down again, diagonal. And you kind of move down in a staircase effect. But if we only resolve the collision upwards, then you don't slide down the slope. So for retro type games, this is kind of the behavior for a slope that you want. So in a nutshell, that's the SAT collision system. It gets the tile coordinates that you're on, it makes the shapes out of these tile coordinates and then it does collision with these shapes. The other collision detection system, the one that checks the tiles one by one, works in a similar way. We get the collision separately like I explained earlier, so we get the X collisions and we get the Y collisions. So again there's a function that gets the entity, the rigid body, the collider and the layer it gets the X collision and the Y collision separately, as you can see on these two lines. We can go into the X collision real quickly. It works quite similar to the other collision detection system. It checks the position of the player, it checks the tile coordinates, but here it checks each tile one by one. It just checks is the tile solid, and then it checks how far we are into the tile, how much overlap we have and then it returns that value. So if we have any X collisions, it resolves the collisions and otherwise there is no X collision. And then we check the Y collisions separately and if there is none, then we don't resolve any of the collisions. Pretty simple. So we can go into the collision detection system just so you can get a better idea of how it works. So it checks all the overlapping tiles 
and if it's a slope it actually checks the slope collision I can go into that real quickly but it's kind of complicated it looks how far we are into the tail horizontally and then based on that it decides how much we need to move the player up and then if it's a cloud we do a cloud collision if it's not a cloud if it's just a solid tile then we do just a normal collision which is just pretty much it just checks the distance of the center between the tile and the player and then it decides how much overlap there is so then it resolves the collisions based on the overlap we just found which is pretty much exactly how the SAT system also works so you can see here if there's a Y collision it just moves the player back the amount of overlap that it had with the tile so just to give you a more visual example you can see here we have a Y overlap of like 3 pixels and then the collision detection just decides to move it back 3 pixels and for the SAT system it's exactly the same the SAT just sees there's an overlap of 3 pixels and it moves the player up 3 pixels so that's a short overview of these two collision detection systems I hope you get sort of an idea of how it works and maybe it can even help you to think of making your own collision detection system I know it's kind of complicated and it might look very scary and the first time you do try it, it really is scary. But I think for every game developer, it's good to have tried this just so you know how these things work under the hood. Even if you decide to use an engine like Unity that has collision detection built in, it's still good to know how it works under the hood. Even if you don't know the specifics, even if you just have like a an idea of how it works, you can use that to your advantage. Thanks for watching through all these explanations. I hope some of you guys enjoyed it. And I'll keep working on the collision detection system since I'm on a roll with it. It's going really well and it's something really important. It's a fundamental part of the engine that needs to work well. So I will keep working on it until I'm satisfied with it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again next week.